Well everyone, we have a brand new piece of equipment for the garage. This is a charger that should allow me to charge the batteries directly off the generator and do it up to 100 amps. So that's pretty cool. That is a lot more powerful than some of the chargers that I've been using in the past. We're gonna do the unboxing, we're gonna look inside of it, we're gonna test it, make sure that it actually works, run through the menu, here we go. I'm excited because we should be able to hook it up to our generator to recharge the battery, and that way we don't have to use the pass-through uh, of our inverters. We can just use the generator just to charge the battery, meaning the inverter stays inverting all the time. In the spirit of full disclosure, Signature Solar sent me this product at no cost to me, uh, but they're not telling me what to say, and if it doesn't work, I'm gonna let you know that it doesn't work. So let's get on with it. Go. So we've got a couple of small screws and a printed manual. Here we are. Well, it's actually smaller than I thought it was going to be physically. Not that that's a bad thing, but just a little bit surprised here. Let me grab my measuring tape. We have almost 14 inches long and five inches by four and a half. So not actually that much space. Have a nice little screen on there. We've got a 125 amp circuit breaker. It says hot surface. DC positive and negative. And here's that model information. Now what's kind of neat is that this can work with a variety of different generators. Uh, 90 volts to 264 volts. So we can use it as 120 only or 240. Uh, but you're gonna be limited to 3000 watts or five kilowatts with 240. So this type of plug should be a 30 amp twist lock standard for a generator connection. And yeah, right there on it, it says NEMA 14-30. So that should be the standard generator connection that I've got on my Honda generator. The battery leads are quite long here. And there are some ring terminals. So the AC cord is four and a half feet long. And the DC cords are six and a half feet long. Well, next up, let's check out what's inside. The shell is held together with very tiny screws. Here we are. Well, let's look at how this is assembled. First off, we have our lid with our little screen and four buttons. We have our circuit breaker. I loosened this, I loosened up the positive wire and it's not pulling out, so they've got it secured into the circuit breaker well. We have two separate chargers mounted inside and I'm looking at how it's connected in here. I think that's a plug, so let's try sliding it out. Uh, yeah, I think it's moving. All right, here we go. And here's the serial number if anybody wants to look that up. So we've got a small fan. I'm not sure which direction it uh, blows. I don't know if it's blowing into the unit and coming out this side, which is what I suspect, uh, but it could be going the other way. Here's the other one. All right, so it looks like the circuit breaker is using the DIN rail connection on the back side. So under the sticker, I can feel a couple of screws and that is holding the DIN rail mount on. The copper wires have some ferrules going into the circuit breaker. So this is how it's built. Now let's reassemble it and see if it'll work. 
All right, well, next step, let's get this mounted up on the wall. And I should note that the batteries are currently off, so there's no spark. Uh, the batteries have a soft start built in, so we're gonna use that to our advantage and turn it on after we've already made this connection. Now we've got the charger mounted up here on the wall. It's right next to the Schneider PDP and the Schneider inverter. And we've got our battery. It's not currently plugged in. All right, so now to turn this on, how about we turn on the main circuit breaker and now we can use that soft start to our advantage. These uh, BMSs have a soft start relay built in. So we'll just go. And now we can see the screen. I'm gonna turn the inverter off for our purposes. I don't actually need that on because I wanna measure how efficiently this is at charging. In the past, I mentioned that I might use one of the GrowWatt inverters as a charger to recharge the battery bank from the generator. The GrowWatt inverters still work fine, but I haven't used them powering the house since I got the Schneider inverter. The downside of using an old inverter is that there's a really high idle loss. I think those GrowWatts are using 70 watts just being turned on with no load on them. I'm really hoping that this unit has a much lower idle loss. I also am curious, how efficient is it? So we're gonna use this Victron shunt with the app connected to the phone. We'll find out what it's using. Everything else is off. The only thing we're gonna be measuring to and from the battery is this charger. So right now we're showing zero watts and let's go ahead and turn the circuit breaker on. And can you see the screen just lit up? So we're consuming something, but it must be so small that it's not even showing up on the Victron app yet. By the way, the batteries are not at 100%. They're more like 30%. It's just because I turned the battery bank off, the smart shunt reset. So currently the screen is showing uh, zero volts down the line. Well, we turned the unit on, uh, the screen is lit, but we're showing zero watts on the Victron smart shunt. So let's, uh, let's round that up to say one watt in idle. And I really don't know uh, exactly what that would be, but as far as the accuracy of the equipment that I have, we'll call it one watt. <laughs> let's wheel the generator outside and bring in the cord and fire this up. This is my generator. It's a Honda EU6500 inverter generator. So it actually puts out nice clean power and I've powered my house with this in the past. And it is 5.5 kVA continuous rating. The 6.5 is just a surge. We'll be able to monitor the VA on this screen and let's go ahead and turn it on. We'll let that warm up before we plug in. Well, here's the cord for the charger and here's the cord for the generator. Let's see what happens. So we're plugged in. The voltage setting there is 57. Let's enter. All right, so I just heard the generator kick up. So it looks like it is Ramping up here, all right. 98 amps. It's showing 99.8 amps on the screen and the Victron is showing 98. It shows 52.23 watts. The generator is showing 57 watts. So I'm gonna to have to turn that down because it can't do that continuously. It's showing 52 here. So I'm gonna to have to adjust this down. The generator cannot do 5,700 watts continuously. So let's change that to 90 amps. And that worked. So it's dropping that down. 
So let's take a look at how efficient that is. So I just started this timer because we'll let this run and see how hot the surfaces get. Well, we're back and we're about an hour and a half into the test. So let's see how hot things got. So this is the cold side. This is where the air is being drawn in. We've got 93 degrees Fahrenheit. And on the hot side, it looks like 116, 18. Let's see up top. 127 Fahrenheit or 53 Celsius. Let's go on the side here. 55 Celsius and 131 Fahrenheit. 55 Celsius on the side. So this is where the air is blowing out. So I'll be remounting this so it's tipped upright. Now the generator ran out of gasoline around minute 43 of the test. Uh, so I had to pause it for about three minutes to refill the gas tank. Uh, so this 4.1 kilowatt hours is not actually accurate. That reset, um, I don't know if it was because of things that I was pressing or if it just always does that. But we've still got 88.39 amps according to the Victron Smart Shunt. So we're all done. Let's turn this off. That about wraps up our test on the charger. I was running it at 90 amps and it's warm. Uh, now I can touch it and it doesn't burn my hand, but I don't want to hold my hand on there for more than about a minute. Now it should cool off. I'm going to be turning this vertical. This is the exhaust side, the side with the battery leads. So I'll be having that on top. All right, now for some fun. Let's do a little bit of math. Now my generator is a Honda and it can do 5,500 watts running continuously. And I've checked that and it's good. Not every generator can do its rated running watts continuously. So you might wanna derate that depending on your generator. I'm gonna use 5,500 watts for my purposes. Now, depending on what the voltage was coming out of this, I was seeing between 90 and 91 and a half percent efficient. So I'm going to use the smaller percent at 90% efficient. So let's go 5.5 kilowatts of the generator times the 90% efficiency. The highest voltage that this charger will go to is 57 volts. Now that means that we could set this charger to 86.8 amps and not overload the generator. The other thing to keep in mind is fuel efficiency. Now this will vary depending on your exact generator, but I like to use the number of 80%. So 80% of the rated load of the generator is typically where you're gonna see the most fuel economy, where you're gonna see the most kilowatt hours out for gallons of fuel consumed. My battery bank is lithium iron phosphate, which has a very flat voltage curve. Typically, this charger is probably going to be seeing 54 volt output the vast majority of the time that it's charging the battery bank. That means that I want to set this charger rate somewhere between 73 amps and 86.8 amps. So I'll probably set this charger to 80 amps somewhere in the middle there. So it'll never exceed the rating of the generator. And most of the time we're, we're going to be a little bit lower than the maximum rating of the generator and we'll kind of be in that sweet spot of fuel economy. So for me, using the Honda 6500EU, which has a 5500 running watts, I'll set this to 80 amps and it'll run pretty efficiently everything involved for my system. You'll have to run your own numbers for your setup. Well, thank you everybody so much for watching. If you enjoy these videos, please like, subscribe, comment and share.